I've said many times on this channel that if you've been in video games long enough, your interest kind of waxes and wanes. And when you're at a kind of a down point and you're not playing a lot of games, I've always said, you know, hold on, the moment will come where you'll get back into the hobby. And that's really what happened to me. If you noticed, I wasn't really doing a lot with the channel over the summer. I decided to uh, go back to grad school, albeit for just a short uh, certification program. And it's funny, being back in the college setting actually made me want to game. Uh, well, quite a long time ago now, I, I always like to say a couple of years ago, but more than a couple of years ago, uh, when I was doing uh, my master's degree program, I remember... And I've said this, I think, on, on the, when I was doing the podcast, you know, those are really some of the best gaming moments of my life. Had my own place, uh, I had time to myself, I would just sit in my house and play uh, the latest games, and that's also when I got, you know, seriously into reliving retro gaming. So, as I'm sitting there, and, and it, it was just sort of a hardwired thing with me as a kid, if I... If I got all my work done, I would just play video games, and so it just becomes a habit, and it got me to kind of wanting to go back and, and doing that, so I figured, okay, I'm going to really get back into gaming this fall, I'm going to get back into the new stuff, and it first started with realizing, hey, Gran Turismo's coming out, that's why I made the video last week when I discovered that Gran Turismo, one of the the games that I loved as a kid, is is becoming something totally different, but I said, okay... Uh, I'm going to get Project Cars too, and I eventually did, and I'm having a blast with Project Cars. And then I saw that Forza was coming out. I was like, hey, let's go for it. Let's pick up Forza, another one of my favorite series. Well, that's when I discovered that Forza, apparently they're, they're doing some thing where they're locking stuff behind a paywall that was in Forza 6, and you have to get loot boxes and, and a, a whole bunch of nonsense. It's incredibly poorly rated uh, on Metacritic, uh, on, on Amazon, so they they did something to Forza. They kind of made it a free-to-play game, uh, apparently, that you're paying $60 for. So two of my favorite racing franchises basically wiped out. And then I was in Walmart the other day. I don't go to Walmart a lot, but I just needed to, to pick some things up, and I happened to walk by... Uh, the electronics section, and they had a Switch display, and lo and behold, they had about nine Nintendo Switches. And I was like, you know what, this this is a sign. You know, Maybe I should pick this up. I mean, they're so hard to find, or at least they were for the longest time. I couldn't get one at launch, and there they are, just stacked up uh, behind the glass. So I walked over to the games and I looked in the, in the sort of game window and I said, you know, there is nothing that I really want to play on this system. I couldn't find one game that I truly wanted to play. I mean, I, you, know, you look at their uh, releases, Splatoon was never my thing. I already played Mario Kart, uh, whatever it was, Mario Kart 8, uh, Pockin Tournament. I, I have that on the Wii U. I didn't really care for it. Um, and of course, Zelda, which was the reason to buy that system, I, since I couldn't get the system, I got it on the Wii U and played as much of that game as, as I wanted to play, and then there's really nothing. I mean, I know that there's, uh, there's ARMS, that doesn't appeal to me. I know that they're doing a Xenoblade, and Xenoblade's okay, I, I, I played the Wii U one for a bit, but it, it wasn't my cup of tea, I don't like that semi-active battle system. I've uh, just never been a, a fan of that in RPGs. And then, of course, Mario Odyssey, which I, I play, I've, I've played every Mario game. I've, I've looked forward to all of the releases in the Mario series. But something about Odyssey just doesn't sit well with me. Not to say that it's not going to be a good game. Not to say that I won't play it and that I won't eventually buy it. But to me, it wasn't... It, didn't, it just doesn't seem like a compelling reason to buy the system, and looking forward, there's there's nothing on the system that I want to buy, even though I have a strange urge to buy it. It's uh, it's strange. I, I I can't explain it. I think it's a cool-looking system. 
I've always uh, supported Nintendo, even though I've been pissed at them uh, of late. But, yeah, so I didn't pick up the Switch. And then a day later, the Amazon Prime alert came up, and they said, oh, we've got Switches in stock. Uh, you Order one now. And I, I still didn't do it, so I, I probably, you know, I could be kicking myself uh, around holiday time that I could have bought, you know, five of these things if I wanted to, and I just couldn't pull the trigger because there's nothing that I want to play. And then the whole Forza thing made me reconsider the Xbox One X, which I did plan to get. But, you know, Forza was the game to plan it. And, and if it's uh, compromised so horribly by their DLC or Loot Crate model, I don't know that I want to pick up the Xbox One X. Plus, I've really been burned on early adoption of late. Uh, PlayStation, well, not, this is not of late, but my PlayStation 3 original one broke. PlayStation 4 original one broke. Um, and other stuff you've heard me talk about on this this channel, different high-end TVs and, and other things that I've picked up, uh, new that just haven't worked out, uh, you know, brand new computer parts that have uh, broken on me. So I kind of feel like the combination of not having the Forza game to play in 4K and HDR plus my track record with buying brand new stuff when it comes out, I'm not going to pick that up. And this should be a great fall of, of releases, and yet I can't really get into anything. I would love to buy all of these products. I would love to, to really have a, a gaming renaissance uh, here in the fall of 2017 to cap off what really I think 2017 is going to be a, a great year in gaming looking back. So many things uh, have come out, so many great games, but I don't know. I mean, when I was a kid, I always said to myself, when I'm older and I have my own life and my own money, I'm going to buy these new games and these new systems. I'm going to get in on the ground floor and really experience uh, what, as a kid, I consider you know, the joy of watching these systems evolve uh, and being there for each new release. But now, as I'm an adult and I've, I've seen the way that this industry is developing and how it's uh, mistreating and disrespecting its customers in so many of its business practices, it's, it's hard to be motivated to buy these things. And while I don't think there's going to be a video game crash anytime soon, I do think that the practices that you're seeing on display with these uh, titles and systems that I've mentioned, the forcing a kind of free-to-play or freemium economy into a full-price game. In the case of Forza, a $100 game or tinkering with a beloved franchise, making it something it's not, um, not really supporting hardware out of the gate and having a, rel a reliability record uh, with just new technology in general that makes enthusiastic people hesitant to become early adopters. All of these things do something dangerous. Uh, they create consumer apathy, and consumer apathy is the first step in a crash. So let's hope the video game industry can avoid that. Let's hope that they can correct some of these practices and just be exciting again.